Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we've got part two of our Toys and Joys dump truck and trailer build. Well, there is a lot to cover this week and there are some very confusing parts to start off with, so I don't really want to talk too much. Really? <laughs> Guys, let's get into the build. So I'm thinking that considering we have our 1 16th router bit set up in the router table, I'm thinking that we're going to do the two front leaf springs. So for starters, we're going to need a piece of, in this case, I think I'm going to use walnut to make it darker. Um, we're going to need a piece that is 5 16th of an inch thick, 3 8 of an inch wide, and we're going to need it at least double the length because we need to make two of these. They're four inches long each, so we're going to need a piece at least nine inches long in this case. Well, I didn't have pieces of walnut that were 5 16th of an inch thick that were long enough to do uh, both leaf springs, so I just cut two pieces. Now, guys, it's always best to work with a bigger piece and then cut it down after, so that's what we're doing. But if we look here at the print, we've got a bit of a dilemma, and the dilemma here is that it calls for a kerf of 1 32nd of an inch. I do not have that small of a router bit. All I have is 1 16th. So that's what we're gonna work with, which means we need to modify this piece a little bit to make it proportionate. So we're just gonna do a little bit of drawing here to give you an idea. So here is, we're gonna say that this is our 3 8 of an inch wide piece of stock. We need to, for starters, there are three dados that are cut into these leaf springs to give the illusion of the spring. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our router table and we're going to route 1 16th of an inch with our router bit. We're going to route it to be a 16th of an inch deep and we're going to route it right in the middle of our 3 8 inch pieces on both sides. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just push this one through with my fingers. What's the difference? It's the same setup, same bit, same height. The difference is I don't have the clearance on this one. Pushing this through with my finger through the bit, look how close I am to the bottom in order for me to get a good grip. So it's all a matter about comfort, guys, and this is dangerous to put it through without using some kind of a push pad. Okay, so now that we've got the groove in each uh, side done perfectly centered. Let's head over to the bench and I'll show you how to finish this off to make it look right because we're modifying from the original pattern. So by routing our 1 16th inch groove in the middle, I'll just color this in here, that has left us with 5 30 seconds of an inch here and 5 30 seconds of an inch here. We still need to do two more routings and keep it properly spaced. So, what are we going to do? Well, if we have 5 30 seconds of an inch on this side and we subtract the 1 16th of an inch that we need for our routing, that is going to leave us with 3 30 seconds. So 3 30 seconds is what's left in total. If we were to route 1 16th off the edge here, I know this isn't a scale, but we are left with 3 30 seconds. So if we divide that by two, that gives us 3 fourths. That means that the distance from our fence to the edge of our router bit has to be 3 fourths then that'll leave 1 16th here for our routing, and this, theoretically, should be 3 fourths. So if we set our fence 3 fourths of an inch from the edge of the bit, route one side, rotate it, and route the other, theoretically, we should end up with evenly spaced routings. So let's give it a try and see how it works out.
And after some careful setup and some careful measurements, this is what you end up with. And while it's not exactly like the plans, um, because of the size of the bit that we had to use, we had to kind of compensate and change things a little. And if we would have followed the measurements on the plans, this would have been totally messed up. So now that we have this routed and we're happy with the results, we can flip it over, do the exact same thing on the opposite side and on our other piece. And then I'll show you how to finish these leaf springs up. Well, our leaf springs have been cut to their final length of four inches. And here on the prints, we can see that at the bottom edge, we have an inch and a quarter wide section, and then it tapers up to be one eighth of an inch at the top corners. So I've measured down one eighth of an inch. I've placed a mark. I have taken our inch and a quarter, subtracted it from our four inches, and then divided it by two, and you get one and three eighths of an inch. That is how much you measure in from each side in order to get your mark and that will leave you with one and one quarter in the middle. We can then draw our line across there to give us where it is that we need to cut this off. Now guys, this piece at this point um, with all this routing is very fragile. So I'm not even going to touch it with any kind of saw um, only because I know what'll happen. It'll snap off these ribs. It'll make an absolute mess of this. So I'm just going straight for the sander and we're just gonna sand it off at that line there. It's a little difficult to see on the walnut, so you really wanna take it slow. We're gonna sand it up to the line to get the taper of those leaf springs and then I'll show you how to clean it up after that. Well, now it's time to finish these up and we don't want to go too crazy on the sanding. So just a small sanding block like this, just a few passes, guys. Don't, don't go crazy on it. You just want to take that top edge and smooth it just a little bit, just like this. That's all you need. That's that one done. And we're going to do the same on this one. Yeah, looks good. And this last one here. Now, the grooves. This is the thing. When you sand to get those tapers, it kind of fills in the end of this groove, but you don't want to sand it too much because you'll lose the crispness. So what you want to do is you want to take a piece of sandpaper and you want to fold it. I folded this one twice and we're gonna put it in the groove here and I'm just going to pull it one way and then the other. That's it. That's really all the sanding you need there to clean this up. So one way and then the other. And it makes it nice and crisp and nice and clean without the risk of overdoing it. Because if you overdo it, you'll take away any detail that you ever put into this in the first place. So two quick passes in each groove with, I believe this is 220 grit sandpaper. And that will be these pieces finished up. Well, the next piece we're going to work on is this mud flap frame. Now guys, I've chosen a piece of maple for two reasons. Number one, the light color of the wood, and number two, also because of the strength of maple. So I've cut the dimensions down to the overall dimensions of 3 16 by 1 quarter by 6 inches long. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the taper on the quarter inch side so we can see it listed here. Now it shows that the flat section before the taper is four and three quarters of an inch long. So I sound kind of like a broken record, just like we did before. You want to take the overall length of six inches, subtract the four and three quarter, and that will give you what's left. Divide it by two and you end up with five eighths of an inch. So if we draw a line from each end at five eighths of an inch, and then we can see on the drawing that the top section is one eighth of an inch thick. So we are going to do that as well. Draw that one eighth of an inch line 
down from the top and that will give us our dimension there. And then all we need to do is join those two lines and that will be our taper. And we're going to do it at the belt sander, just like we've been doing. Well, this is where it might get confusing for some people. This is the quarter inch wide side, and this is the way that it is sitting on the drawing. But we now need to mark for the taper on the 3 16th inch side, and it's not really listed as to the dimensions. So what you want to do is take it like this and turn your piece toward you so that you're looking at the back, the flat back of your piece. And this is where we want the taper to be, right here, right on this front edge. So the dimensions for this on this taper are, I've measured them off the drawing, it's 1 16th will be left at the back of our piece. So we'll just mark that 1 16th on each of our ends here and try to keep your piece in the same orientation. Don't don't lose track of what you're doing here. It's easily done. There we go. So 1 16th from the back and although it doesn't say it, I've measured it off and we want to come in from the end 3 8 of an inch. And we're going to mark it at 3 8 of an inch from the end. There we go. And then we want to join up, just like we have been, we want to join those lines. This is a little finicky, but it's not as bad as some pieces that I've worked on. All right, and that's what you should have. So if we look at it here, this is the quarter inch side, your tapers are on the bottom, and then if you rotate it towards you, now your tapers as well on the 3 16th side should be on the bottom as well. So we're gonna take this over to the belt sander and we're gonna carefully take off those two tapers on the 3 16th side. And there you should be able to see the two tapers there. There's the two on the quarter inch side and then the two on the 3 16th side. And that guys is uh, the mud flap frame done. With the mud flap frame done, it only makes sense that we move on to the mud flaps. Now guys, this takes 1 16th of an inch thick material. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a chunk of walnut because I want them to be darker. We're going to joint it and flatten it to make sure that it's able to run safely through the table saw. And we are going to cut some thin strips of 1 16 thick walnut. So for this guys, all you need to do is place a mark on your walnut at 1 16 of an inch from the end and then set your fence up so that that 1 16 of an inch is cut to the outside of the blade. You can just kiss the wood with the blade and then check the thickness to make sure that it is the 1 16 that you want. And if you're happy with that measurement, you can set your combination square from your miter slot to the edge of the board and that will give you a gauge for repeatability to cut more 1 16 of an inch strips down the line if you need them. Then just run it through to get your cut for the 1 16 thick material. And then you can use a small parts cutting jig or your miter fence to cut the pieces to size. In this case, one and a half by one and three quarters. And that's all she wrote for the mud flaps. Now you can see I've added some laser embellishments. While I had the laser out, I added a couple of latches to our battery box. Um, but as well, guys, remember I said about having foresight, looking ahead in the builds. So I looked way ahead, and if I'm already going to be making Kentworth um, mud flaps and lasering that, I might as well make the ones for the trailer as well. They are a little larger, so check your prints. Um, these ones here actually measure two and an eighth by one and five eight, as opposed to these that are inch and a half by one and three quarter. So no big deal, we just adjusted our laser engraving, adjusted the stop on our small parts jig, and we have those parts cut. 
Well, from here, I want to move on to our front axle. And we can see here that it is half an inch by half an inch by four and one sixteenth of an inch long. However, um, the holes that it shows here in the end at five sixteenths diameter, I am not doing that. Um, I do my wheels a little differently. I'll explain it as I go, but my holes are going to be a quarter of an inch in diameter. So the first thing we want to do is rip our stock to our half inch by half inch. And then once we get that done, we can cut it to length and then add this little three quarter radius divot in the middle. That's not really imperative guys. It doesn't have to be perfect, but what we want to do at this point is head over to the drill press. Well, because I make my wheels on a pen mandrill that has a quarter inch shaft, I change the way I drill holes in these models. If it is a stopped hole, like what this one is right here, I drill the hole at a quarter of an inch in diameter so that my axle pin of a quarter inch can fit firmly and the wheel can turn around the axle pin. If it is a through axle, I usually go a little bigger, something 5 sixteenths or less, something in between a quarter and 5 sixteenths. So for this one here, we're going to be drilling a quarter inch diameter hole. Now they are 7 eighths of an inch deep and I have set my depth stop to stop at 7 eighths of an inch into each piece. I have marked the center of each end of our axle and center punched where I want the hole to go. Now this here, this is a pen blank drilling jig and it holds it nice and vertical for me. But if you don't have that, you can use one of these, a hand screw clamp. And all I've done is I've tightened it up and then drilled a through hole in the end of the clamp. And you can just sit your blank here, bottom it out onto your waste board of your drill press table and tighten it. And that will hold it nice and secure so that you can drill uh, the ends of your axles. But for me, I prefer my pen drilling jig. But if you don't have it, you have an, an option here. So let's get these holes drilled in the ends for our axle pins. Now one thing I'd like to point out guys is don't try to do it all in one shot. Lift your drill bit up every once in a while to clear out the hole and get the chips out of there. It'll prevent your bit from deflecting and you'll get a cleaner drilled hole. The last step for this front axle is the roundover, and you can see on the drawing it shows a 1 16th inch radius roundover. I don't have that. I have 1 8th as my smallest size, and that's what I'm going to use, and that should be just fine. So just be sure to use something other than your hands to hold this, guys. And if you can get a starter pin to use, uh, that's way better than trying to do it freehand. A lot of time could be spent on this build explaining pieces that have no need being explained. Pieces that I've already demonstrated how to do. Simple rip cuts, simple cross cuts, using either your miter fence or a small parts jig. And that is where the next pieces come into play. Pieces like the front leaf spacers or the spring top spacers. Guys, pieces like the lock pin holder or the rear spring bracket. They are nothing more than simple rip cuts and simple cross cuts. And for me to go through each and every one explaining the process, this video would be 450 parts and nobody would care at that point. So I'm gonna get all of these simple pieces cut, show you what I end up with, and then from there, we can carry on with some more difficult pieces. And before too long, you'll have your rear spring brackets, your front axle bracket, your two front leaf spring spacers, your top spring spacers, your lock pin holder with that tiny little 332nd hole in it. Little tip on that hole, guys, drill slower than you have ever drilled in your life to prevent the bit from deflecting. Then we have our drop down lock pin and lastly our exhaust pipe connector. Um, this one here through the end grain with that 5 16 hole. It is kind of a tough drill, 
but use a hand screw clamp to hold on to your stock and just go slow, clearing your bit often so that you can avoid smoking it out and overheating your bit. Now, I have cut a few extras of these pieces just in case one of these messes up at some point in time. Easier to cut them now uh, and waste a little bit of stock than what it is to do the setup later and try to duplicate them. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have again this week, guys. Um, you know, I'd like to say we're making some wicked progress here, but it doesn't seem like we're doing much. We are still on page one. There is so many finicky little pieces here on page one. And while normally I could bang these off with no problem, um, explaining the ins and outs of those pieces takes time on the show. And unfortunately, in a, in a format like this on the show, it's not like you can be here in person and I can just show you and you go off and do it. It needs to be explained. But now that we've got a lot of these explanations out of the way, there's a lot of repetition in a lot of these procedures. So we should start picking up momentum now. Either way, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Hang in there. Honestly, this build is going to pick up um, and it's going to pick up rather quickly. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have an amazing audience base here, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of that. Guys, I'm having a lot of fun with this one. A little tedious, but we're getting there, getting there slowly. I hope that you're enjoying it so far. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you're going to give this one a try at home and build this model along with me piece by piece. And more importantly, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.